I think that it's time for us to really seriously look at hemp as the energy source that it is. I don't care who we are in the different aspects of the movements, causes or any other thing. I think if we're not going to give up our addiction to materialism, then we should seriously, I'm talking about us. I'm not just talking about the bad guys. Those of us who are addicted to materialism, and we all are to some degree, and if we can't change that addiction to materialism, what we can do is we can change the energy, all right, that is used to generate it to a friendlier, healthier energy. And this is one of the energies. I'm focusing on hemp, all right, in the sense that an acre of hemp will make like 50 barrels of oil. You know what I mean? Let's think about this. You know, we hear the sloganeering about a green economy and alternative energy, and we hear a lot of people talking about a lot of fantasies and a lot of stuff, but things that could be made into a dream that could be turned into a reality. So you look at just the land base itself. Hemp is earth-friendly. You don't have to buy the seeds. It seeds itself. Because they were talking about the greatest catastrophes that have happened in America, environmental catastrophes man-caused the number two thing is the deforestation of, the, of America when they're talking about environmental disasters, right? But hemp could replenish the air, and it's renew every year it can replenish it, and you can cut it down, and you can make barrels of oil, oil out of it. You can make food out of it. It's got the protein. It's healthy in every kind of way. See, so it's something that you can consume the entire product and it's not harmful to the environment. Then I'm not talking about marijuana. I'm talking about let's get over this hemp and marijuana thing. Let's respect what hemp really is because it, it is an earth medicine. I mean, in practical terms, how many people that live with the land, farmers, aren't making it? They're so far in debt, all right? They're prisoners. They're being held economic prisoners on land. And, and they may be kicked off the land or... At any time, how many people live within that reality? Turn a significant portion of this land base over into a hemp economy. It's healthy to the earth, all right? It's people generated, it creates an economy. It creates an economy. It creates work. You know, up until the mid-1880s, hemp was the largest cultivated crop on this planet. And see, and then it started diminishing. But you notice it started diminishing with the emergence of oil? Because it could do everything that oil could do, but it could do it cleaner. But the problem was anybody could grow the hemp, but the oil, only a few could get access to the oil. So this is why they cut down the trees. This is why, you know... And oil's not going to go away because it's just not, you know, I hear this whether they're from the right or the left, whether we're the ones that are complaining about the bad guys or the bad guys themselves saying, well, we got to reduce America's dependency on foreign oil. Well, hey, <laughs> well, then let's do it. On my own personal attitude on it, you know, I think if the environmentalists are serious, then get on this. I'm not saying you put away solar energy or wind energy or soybean energy or corn energy. I'm not saying put away anything. I'm saying get on this because this one you're conserved. Every one of us has interest. It's time for us to smarten up, all right? And I think a part of that smartening up process is about recognizing hemp as the plant that it is and get away from this whole image of it that it represents marijuana because I think that's an obstacle. You know, I mean, it shouldn't be, but, you know, but we're dealing with what we're dealing with. But I think we really need to seriously look at him. It's something I think that's attainable. It's something I think that we can do. I'm not about making it known to the system itself. This is what we want, not asking them. Will you support this? Will you, will, you know, will you include this? Will you support this? No. Going to them and saying, look, this is what we want. Making it known that we want this to happen. And I think that it can happen within a reasonable period of time. But it can only happen by the energy people are willing to put into it. So in my mind, I look at all the people, all the people that are concerned about climate change, all the people that are concerned about the environment, all the people that talk about alternative energy, 
I think that if they're serious about what they're talking about, then, then out of that seriousness, they need to ex- open their conscience a little bit and focus on this because it's the most practical to start with because you don't need to develop a new technology. It's the most practical to start with. And I'm not talking about that uh, industrial hemp that's legalized in Canada and Europe because they, they've doctored the seed. It, it only has a certain amount of strength. I'm talking about the natural seeding that grows in Nebraska, that grows in South Dakota, just grows where it grows, that natural hemp that just grows and reseeds itself. Because this seed, this hemp, can make that 50 barrels of oil to an acre. The other one that has industrial acceptance can only make maybe three barrels. It's about this. It's about energy. And this is an alternative energy. This is the alternative energy that is earth-friendly. For something that can bring us together, our re-evaluation and reconsideration of the importance of energy and the role we play in it. See, that's what can bring us together. None of the rest of it's going to. This one can, because energy, that's at the core of who we are, and it's at the core of what we need, energy. Project Heart, Hemp Energies, Alternative resource technologies, yes, all right? People need to get serious and focus on something that is healthy for the planet in relationship to their terminologies of alternative energy and green energies and, you know, green economies, all of these things. We think that this is a practical approach and a practical thing to do. And so we're calling it Project Heart, and our objective is, is to speak our attitude. This is what we think, and that's really what we're about, speaking our attitude. And this whole idea of alternative energy and all these things that us, the good guys, say we want to protect the earth, we think this is the one that is the most practical and applicable. And we're going to speak that attitude and looking for people who understand it and maybe can relate to that attitude. Let's just see what kind of energy can come back. But if you don't start, then you don't know. You know, because we think this is a doable thing. See, when we look at all of the stuff that's going on, it all comes down to this. Who wants it the most? Reality to me. Who wants it the most? Do the bad guys want to plunder the earth more than we want them to stop? It it, it just comes down to that. Who wants it the most? All right, well, so, and what we're looking at, well, we see something that we know is earth-friendly, healthy for the earth as an energy source that the earth provides for us that we can consume and it's healthy to the earth. So in this, who wants it most? <laughs> well, this, we want this the most. And this is what we're going to go after and we will see. So it, it's about attempting to see how, how, how far we can go with this whole idea of hemp energy as an alternative resource technology. See, how far can we go with this idea? How many people will understand it? I like to think in terms of race consciousness or education and stuff, but, but in the end, <laughs> you know, cut through all of that. All right, this is the energy we want to ride, and let's see how far we can go with it and how many people will relate to it. You know, and I may come across with attitude and time, and, and I'm not sensitive enough about trying to talk people into maybe things, you know, but I do have this attitude. I'm tired of hearing the environmentalists cry around about how bad stuff is. I really am. I'm tired of hearing a lot of people just cry around and blame the bad guys, all right, because it's almost like we're letting ourselves off the hooks because we've, we're the self-proclaimed good guys. When I know we have the ability to truly affect change, I know that we have it, but we're settling for this secondary thing. Let's just repeating the cycle that the generation before repeated. Let's just repeat this stuff and pretend we're changing something and the beast gets bigger and bigger and human extinction gets nearer and nearer. <laughs> something needs to happen. We need to take responsibility. We need to take responsibility. We need to take responsibility. Project Heart has been in the works for uh, mentally, (laughs) trying to figure out, right? About a year now about putting this emphasis on this attitude about let's going to hemp and really looking at it. This thing came along just while we're in our thinking forming stages. And this just happened to happen. 
Well, anyway, when we came up with the idea of Project Heart and we're starting to think about that, you know, we're looking at this because we see it as necessary even if this gusher hadn't happened. See, this gusher isn't the motivator for this. See, because we knew this logic says it's going to happen at some point because that's just percentages. It's laws of averages. It's percentages. You get away with it X amount of time, but there's always going to be that one. So this had to happen. So we weren't thinking in terms of this. We were just thinking in terms of being in America, um, the Americans massive need for energy consumption, all right? And they're not willing to reduce it. Even the good guys aren't. Oh, they might buy a more eco-friendly automobile or not, or this or that, but when you just average it out, whatever they give up on here for energy consumption, they overcompensate for over here. <laughs> See, and life is about energy, so what's a practical way that we could really approach this? Meeting an energy need that really is practical and viable and hemp is it and we find it interesting see that of all the people all right that are going into climate change and environmental friendly things nobody really will approach him there's some small small groups of people that really are trying to do it like even in a few states where they tried to experiment with industrial hemp and stuff you know but see other than that the people that are really networked, the people that are connected to the foundations, the people that are really networked in community organizing, the people that are really networked to the money that can make consciousness be raised, they don't touch it. Like, like if somebody sees this somewhere while we're talking, I mean, well, obviously somebody's going to, that's why we're doing it. But if, if they just put the word out, if people see this and agree with what we're saying, about hemp energy, then communicate it the best way that they can. That's the first step. If people get this and understand it and have some agreement with it or are open to it, if they would just put the word out as much as they can about hemp energy, we want hemp, <laughs> we want hemp to be used as an energy source. And they communicate it to whoever they communicate, however they communicate, saying this is what we want. People, to go and do the research and find out more specifically what hemp can do. Because I can sit here and say, well, it does these food things, and it does. But I'm not, I don't have the kind of mind, but I know it's very healthy. It's got protein and, and amino acids and stuff. Whatever it is, it's, you know, it's got all this good stuff as a food for us. You can make clothes. You can make paper. You can make a house. You can make fuel. You can make toothpaste, you know. See, so all of these things, and we would ask that people check it out. You know, go learn about what, what it is that can be done. People start to inform themselves. That's the first thing is that we want people to do. And somewhere along the line, because we are making this up as we go along, all right? I'm sure we will be visiting states where we know, like North Dakota, pulling that out of the air, but North Dakota, we know that they've legalized hemp. Or they've tried to. They've been through different motions of it. So we know that they're open to hemp as an economic base. These are people that never smoked a joint. These are people that live with the land. See, so we want to, yeah, so we want to find the people that are hemp friendly and see if there's some kind of a way in common that maybe we can support this idea. It isn't that we have to tell each other what to do, but we can collectively ag agree, well, all right, we'll support this idea about pushing, now, hemp energy. This is what we want as an alternative energy and put more energy to it than it was put into wind and solar.